My dear friend, Megan, I am delighted that you're here today to do this short little podcast to tell our friends and family how amazing you are. I know you hate it when I say that, but also the great work that you're doing to make such amazing impact on our world. I'm always impressed with the amount of work that you do in a day, a week, and the impact you make always. So thank you again for joining. I know that you've got this really cool initiative coming up. I want to hear all about it. I want you to tell our friends about it. So why don't you tell us first a little bit about your background in education and what brought you to this moment? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh. Um, my background is a weird and wonderful path uh, with no straight lines ever. Um, originally, when I was a kid, I was homeschooled and I grew up uh just outside of Strathmore, Alberta, and uh, I had this big dream of becoming a, the next powerhouse prosecutor at the International Criminal Courts, and so I would always read my criminal codes, and I was obsessed, uh, and so that's kind of where a lot of my passion started, um, but I didn't end up going in a different direction, uh, which has helped me a lot, and I actually got my Red Seal uh, Baker designation when I was uh, 20, and decided that, you know, let's give some other things a go. And then I came and I got to meet you, which was always an incredible part of my, my story. Me. All sorts of cool things with you. Uh, and then I ended up making my way to Mount Royal and doing my criminal justice honors degree. Uh, and there I got to learn all sorts of indigenous knowledge systems, systems thinking, uh, sociology, psychology, all the ologies. Um, and be able to really find my niche when it came to criminal justice and justice reforms and those sorts of things. Um, and that's what's led me to this path and to hopefully where I am now and where I'll be in the future. What are you working know. on <laughs> now? <laughs> uh, so right now I'm looking to pursue my master's. So I've been accepted to the University of Liverpool to do my master's in criminological research, which is a mouthful. Um, it's basically just learning advanced theoretical and practical training in research methods uh, with a specific focus on correctional environments and um, punitive measures, which wow. is fun for some people. Fun so for some. So, okay. <laughs> so then tell us why you're so passionate about this area. There's a few reasons. Um, two separate ones. Uh, when it comes to the research side of things, I've always loved that analytical side of looking at things and looking at numbers and breaking things down. Um, and I've had some really incredible professors and mentors and teachers over the years that have really helped me understand not only restorative justice, justice practices, but also corrections, quantitative and qualitative methods and how that can really, for some people, again, I understand I'm an exception there, uh, really sparks joy and brings light into the world in a way that we can use this research when done correctly to be able to actually do things for the better, but also to inspire the next generation. And I think for me, research itself is something that, while it always feels like it's very, um, very distant and it's a weird hoity-toity type of field that it's really not, uh, and so to be able to expand and learn about research really brings it down to a level that everyone should be able to have and be able to understand. And that's why I love the research side of it. And I want to be able to pass that on to other people. Um, when it comes to the criminal justice side of things, for me, I grew up, again, just outside of Strathmore. I got to see a lot of different minority overpopulations, indigenous overpopulation in lots of different aspects of the criminal justice system. Um, and for me, my passion was always to be able to be that person that can save at least one person or can help someone not continue down a path, whether that's after they've already been in contact with the justice system to be able to ease back into society and still become a functional full human being that is able to succeed as much as they can and they want to, or if that's before, so that they never have to even start with that experience. That's I think where really justice research and criminal justice research is 
just expanding into in a way that's not just looking at why do people commit crime, but why can we, why can't we make something that is better for everyone and that is able to change our social settings. And that's where I'm really excited to see things go is changing, changing our models, our mental models around the idea of criminality and the background behind that. Wow, amazing. <laughs> I could forever, but, you know. I've always loved your heart <laughs> from the day we met and um, the, the things that you do in this space. So I'm grateful for your service and I'm Thank so you. glad that you're passionate about it. Now tell us what, what's next then after this? What does this look like? Uh, a lot of school, <laughs> never ending school. Um, so once I finish my master's degree, thankfully that's only one year. Um, after I want to do my PhD, where it will be, where I'm going for that. Uh, we don't know yet. We'll figure that out when we get there. Uh, I told myself I'm, I'm allowing myself to only tackle one degree at a time. So we'll get to the next degree when we get there. Um, but once I complete my PhD, I want to come back to Canada um, and really focus on coming back and teaching and doing research and being able to actively give back to the community, not only through my research, but through all sorts of other things. Um, and being able to really see that practical and hands-on research can be applied to Canadian contexts and to be able to work towards all of the great methods and approaches that are really happening right now, to be able to change our environments of like, our sort of retributive exordia of correctionals facilities into this more rehabilitative approach so mm -hmm. that all of these incredible people that haven't had opportunities or haven't had the ability to see things the way we do are able to be given those opportunities. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and okay, so and I know this. I didn't prepare you for some of these questions. <laughs> the the next one is really about who gets that research and how does that then get applied. Like I'm thinking, if you're going to be in Canada, who will you be working with? Where does the research go, and how does it then impact what it is you're trying to do? Yeah. So, well, uh, hopefully, I would love, I would love for my role to be as unique and weird and complex as it is currently, uh, and to be able to work with all sorts of people. So for one has aspect, I would love to be able to work with undergraduate and graduate students um, so that that research, because it's not only the outputs of the research, but it's the impacts on the researchers themselves as well. So learning on that side of things, being able to experience things as a researcher and as a student really prepares you to continue on that legacy of helping others um, and being able to really create the foundation of restorative research methods themselves. Um, on top of that, I would love to be able to work with community. Uh, well, be it whether that does include government partners, who knows? I think that uh, that's a very much a changing landscape right now when it comes to bureaucracy and political landscapes. So I won't even begin to think of where in five, 10 years we'll be in that landscape. And I think that will, that will be a when we get to it type of approach, mm -hmm. but being able to work with community partners like John Howard, uh, lots of those sorts of community partners who are already doing great things and great programming mm -hmm. and being able to understand where we're at in the system. Mm -hmm. And I think right now there's also a really big approach to restorative justice and bringing that into our correctional settings more. Mm -hmm. um, and so I would love to be able to see a lot of my research around the architecture of prisons and how that affects people's mental states, psychology, emotions, all of those things be able to be incorporated. So it's really looking at a holistic picture of how we help people, mm -hmm. not just looking at, here's a program, here's some buzzing light bulbs, they're obviously two separate things, but they're not mm -hmm. because everybody is a weird, wonderful, complex group of people and you can't just solely focus on one thing. So mm -hmm. <laughs> there's a lot of different options. Yeah. Sounds like it. And of course, my dad used to say, go as far as you can see and then you'll see further. So <laughs> I think that's the path you're on. 
um, as of today, you're now you're funding and it's it lot, largely because we had a what we thought was going to be a scholarship mm -hmm. and unfortunately that didn't happen. So now we are needing about 32,000 ish. Yep. Uh -huh. And you got it broken down and it's a GoFundMe. Is that correct? It's a fund my travel, fund which my is travel. Um, the travel version of GoFundMe. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. And um, anybody who is interested in giving $10 or $500 or $5,000 is able to do that through this link. And then as well, you would stay in touch with them. You would keep them informed of your progress. And if there's an opportunity for ever, an opportunity to have a bridge built in the future where who knows, maybe it's someone who sees this video and is interested in getting to know you now so that when you come back to Canada, you have a place to come and do your work and make the impact on day one. Is that some of the things that you're thinking? Yeah, absolutely. And honestly, even the contacts in the UK, a lot of my research and work, it doesn't have to wait until I come home. It's right. one of the great things about being able, the program that I'm in right now, uh, mm -hmm. and specifically with Liverpool, is that one of the big focuses on the program is an international lens right. on justice. So I can't answer yet exactly what that international lens is going to look like. Sure. But there's always a way to be able to tie it into something that's still useful and still actively promoting success for our community. So mm -hmm. at any time, those connections are always incredible. Excellent. Awesome. Thank you, Megan. And I look forward to having you back in Canada so that we can have that impact from here affecting the rest of the, the globe in a positive way. Anything else we can do for you, do you believe at this time outside of funding? Um, I think right now for me, the contacts are the biggest thing. Uh, moving your entire life <laughs> across an ocean um, is rather daunting. So knowing if there's any folks out there that want to connect in the UK, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> go for coffee, any of those things, give me some tips about, you know, the trains, that would be cool. Um, trains, also, easy, by the way. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hope so. <laughs> it is. I did it. Even I can figure it out. You can do it. <laughs> Perfect. Easy. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, all sorts of fun things I'm the coffee shop recommendations you know I'm in for all of those um I'm also looking because moving all of my things to the UK is uh also a fun time right now so if anybody has any good packing tips <laughs> or good resources for luggage for uh those sorts of things packing supplies getting things there is always another fun time so <laughs> But yeah, that's that's about it, I think, right now. Okay. We'll, see. <laughs> well, thank you. We'll put a link to your Fund My Travel. Obviously, you'll have your full bio. And as it continually changes, even with your two most recent awards that you just were awarded, so thank you. Update that regularly. Keep us all posted on how you're doing and if there's anything else we can do to support you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Megan. Have you. Thanks. Thank you.